Hello everyone and welcome to Medicated Housewife DIY where crafting and mental health come together. My name is Sarah. Today's DIY video is a $1 tumbling tower block DIY. We are making this modern, rustic, and maybe a little farmhouse remote control stand. It's a very high-end look from tumbling tower blocks. That is the Dollar Tree jingle block. And you're gonna love it, so stick around. So let's go make some stuff and jump right into this. In today's video, we are making this gorgeous, modern, rustic, and maybe even a little bit farmhouse remote control stand. You could also call it a holder or a caddy using Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks, all for about a dollar. This remote control holder is so high-end looking, you're going to be amazed that something so easy can look this good. So let's get started. To begin with, as I mentioned, we are using Dollar Tree tumbling tower blocks, or the Jenga blocks, to make this remote control stand. And this holder or stand is 10 rows high, and each of those rows is a square consisting of three blocks on each of its four sides. So. Each square needs 12 blocks, and doing the math with 10 rows, that's going to be 120 blocks total needed. But to start with, we are simply gluing together 40 rows of three blocks. I'm going to be using tight bond wood glue, which I will link for you below. And we will also be using 16 small wood cubes from the Dollar Tree, but we'll get into that more later in the video. And in case you're wondering what inspired this DIY, I will tell you, a couple of my subscribers had requested I try and make a remote control caddy or holder and I realized, hey, I don't own a remote control holder or caddy or, you know, stand either. And my TV remotes are just all out in the open, around the living room, and frankly, often misplaced. So I decided to make one that would suit my own home decor because, hey, I'm going to use this thing and hopefully you will too. Once I have all 40 rows of the three blocks glued end to end, now it's time to make my squares. And you can see as I'm doing it here that I'm gluing my groups of three on their sides and all together we're going to be making 10 squares with them. Now for my design, I needed to have one of my squares wrapped in jute twine. This one, this jute I got at the Dollar Tree, and I started with a dab of hot glue inside the square, and then began wrapping the jute neatly around and around. And I did stop and use a dab of glue every now and then, but sparingly, because I really didn't want to see any glue clumps or strings through my jute. So I'm wrapping kind of carefully and using the glue to secure it, but again, sparingly. The only time I use more glue is when I get to the corners because wrapping the jute over some of those edges, it becomes necessary to use more glue so that the jute doesn't slip out of place and ruin the look. So as a result, there is more glue at the corners and also a little more bulk of rope because you gotta wrap it a little, a few more times in the corners to really get the coverage. But it really doesn't change the look of the finished project, so we're just gonna go with it. I wrap the jute until all four sides and corners of this one square are fully covered. And this part takes a little time to complete, but it's so simple and it's easy to kind of zone out a little bit. It's, it's like crafting meditation. With one of my squares covered in jute, I needed to paint the remaining nine squares. So I'm using Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to cover all the sides and the insides of all nine squares in a full coat of the antique wax. After they're painted, I do go back in with a baby wipe and I just give them all a little rub in any of their super dark spots just to try and get some of the wood to show through. You know, it's a nice rich brown color that I just painted on, but I do wanna be able to see the wood. I then put the squares all aside to dry. Next comes the wood cubes, also from the Dollar Tree. I needed to use 16 of them for the project, but I took out 20 to work with because I do like to have extras. So I paint these cubes with the Waverly Antique Wax as well. And since the wood they use for these cubes is actually 
even worse than the wood in the tumbling tower blocks, if that's possible. And I don't know if you've noticed lately, but these tumbling tower blocks just seem to be getting worse and worse. I mean, wood quality wise and the sizing and stuff like that. Let me know in the comments if you guys have experienced this too. But anyway, I find the four sides of the cube that we'll be showing and I try my best to paint them with the grain just up and down with the grain, just to try and make the wood look a little better quality. Same technique of painting as with the blocks, and then I'm gonna gently rub them with a baby wipe to get that wood grain to show through. I give a quick sanding, and mostly to the edges of my squares, to get that distressed kind of effect that I'm looking for. I also use this sanding block on the cubes as well. It's really a light sanding and it's pretty much, as I said, concentrated on the edges and the corners as though it's some natural wear and tear that would occur and that's the look that I'm going for. Next I take some Apple Barrel acrylic paint in Beachcomber Beige and I'll link all the paints I use in the description box below. I mix a couple of drops of folk art acrylic paint in the color coffee latte into that because I wanted to make the beige just a little bit darker so that I had some contrast with the antique wax, but the color, I don't want the color to be stark white or, or beige or too light or anything jarring like that. I want it to be a subtle contrast. I use a dry chip brush and I only dab it in the paint and then rub most of that off before moving the brush lightly over the squares. And all of this is in a very haphazard way. You don't want the beige to look intentional. You just kind of let your instinct instinct take over with this, uh, go with how you feel. And you can't really make a mistake when you follow your gut in painting and in life. I used the same beigey color and the same technique with the chip brush on the wood cubes, just the same as I did with my blocks. I took seven of my squares and began gluing them together. Now, if you saw my Jenga block lamp video a couple weeks ago, this is gonna look very familiar. But if you haven't, I will link it for you in the description box below. But we are going to be gluing each square on top of the other, only slightly askew. So I move each square a bit back from the square beneath it. It is so much easier to understand it if you just watch me do this, because me explaining it makes it sound kind of complicated, and it's so not. Each square is glued back about a half an inch back from the one under it, so you end up with this kind of cool twisted effect. You'll understand when you see how the first seven squares look once they've been glued. Also, although I didn't mention it, I am using the tight bond wood glue applied with a brush to attach my squares together. Before attaching the top rows, I need to make the bottom of my remote stand, holder, caddy, whatever we're calling it. I took six jumbo craft sticks and painted them with the Waverly Antique Wax. I also grabbed four large wood cubes that I had. I got them on Amazon for an upcoming video and I will link the large cubes for you uh, below. I painted them the same way I painted the smaller cubes and they will be used under the base of the project to give it some height. I then turned the painted jumbo craft sticks over and I used two smaller craft sticks glued horizontally across all six to keep them together and in place. And that is going to be the base for the project to rest on. Using my final square as a template, I took a pencil and traced the size of the square onto the craft stick bottom that I just made. And I'm using my handy, super strong clippers that I got on Amazon um, to use to cut all those pine cones from my pine cone flower video. They're very strong, they did the job. And I'm using them here. I used the clippers and trimmed all the ends of the craft sticks to make it the right size square to use for the bottom of my project. I then took the sanding block and sanded all of the sharp edges, just so that, you know, it wasn't dangerous. I also took some Waverly Antique Wax and painted all of those edges that I had just cut. I used the tight bond wood glue to glue the project onto the craft stick bottom, and I made sure that it was secure. 
I then began gluing the small wood cubes to the top of my project. And first I glued a cube into each corner, onto each corner, and I pushed the cubes to be flush with the outer side of the square so that they overlapped on the inside of the square where no one could see them and they were flush on the outside. After I did the corners, I spaced out and glued down three more cubes onto each side of the square and those cubes were also flush with the outer side of the square. I then took the ninth square and glued that directly over the wood cubes. I followed that with our final and tenth jute covered square and that goes directly over the ninth one. I glued that off camera with some hot glue. I also used wood glue to glue the four large wood cubes to the very bottom of the project as they're going to be the feet and they're there to give the whole thing some height. And this is how my tumbling tower block remote control stand turned out. I don't know if we should call this rustic or modern rustic or modern farmhouse or even a little French country, but I love, love, love the color and the finish on it. And personally, it works great just like this for my decor. I do think that you could personalize this with a different finish if that would work better for you. I could see this looking more modern if it were painted black or more farmhouse if it was painted white. I think there are lots of options here. And speaking of options, while this certainly works to hold my three TV remotes, and I'm sure you could fit a couple more in there if need be, I also see no reason why you can't use this as an awesome plant holder. I mean, it's just a pretty piece of home decor that frankly, you can put anything in that you want. It's not limited to TV remotes. I would love to hear what you guys think and what you think this beautiful holder, caddy, whatever, would be best used for. Let me know in the comments what you think. And actually, this saga does not end here. After I filmed this, I was moving the remote control stand into my living room and I dropped it on the ground, like full on dropped it. And the whole thing was in pieces except the very bottom and the very top. So I glued the top to the bottom and now I have this lovely, modern, rustic, beautiful mini tray. I mean, I may even like this tray better than the original project, you know, just making lemonade out of lemons. But if you like this tray too, let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this roller coaster medicated housewife DIY and if you did, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing. It really helps out my channel. Once again, thanks for watching. And until next time, I'm the Medicated Housewife and crafting is my medication.